Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Hector Bones, Dan Crafton, Tim Ashman, and our brand new patrons, Tyreek and Brandon. Yay! Yay. Welcome on in. On this episode of DTNS, how is X going to deal with the ongoing explicit content problem? Gently? Laugh now, cry later? Or ID gaff? Apple shows off its multimodal LLM chops, and why is Microsoft going cross-platform for games? Well, Scott will tell us. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, February 7th, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. In th uh, two feet of snow and growing, I'm Scott Johnson in Salt Lake City. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. He didn't have a snowing problem. He had a growing problem. Uh-huh. Okay. Sure did. Growing amount of snow. Uh, sure. Wow, you got a lot of snow, huh? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It's you guys. It's L.A. You guys said oh, it's all yeah. It's all the winter. Rain. This is not that unusual, right? No, I never... no. no I didn't think any. we had left any water in the clouds for you. I know. Yeah, I, would, I, was hope, I was hoping most of it would end there, but no, it moved here, got cold, and then came to us in a different form. But look, it's fine. It's the way things go. It's how we drink here in the valley. So that's right. It, you need that snowpack. Yeah. yeah. You, you'll want that come July and August. So you're right. All right. Let's start with the quick hits, Sarah. Disney Plus is the latest to start cracking down on password sharing. Subscribers are now being informed of new changes to Disney Plus's terms of service that will make it harder for people to access the service using login credentials that aren't actually theirs. And that starts March 14th for existing customers. In effect now, if you're a new customer just signing up. Disney Plus started the password sharing call with its Canadian subscribers a few months ago. And earlier this week, Hulu sent out similar notices to its users about changes to its own terms of service and its plans to stop password sharing in the coming weeks. Speaking of Disney, uh, Disney is going to team up with Fox and Warner Brothers uh, in a statement. All three said they would create a combined sports streaming service that will offer content from all the major leagues they have deals with, NBA, MLB, NHL, NFL. Uh, this confirms a Wall Street Journal report with all three companies having one-third ownership of a brand new service. No pricing options were shared, but the company says fans will get more choices. <laughs> of course they said that. Uh, especially <laughs> those who have cut the cord. Yeah, they said a lot of things. The new service is expected this fall, and we'll be talking at length about this on tomorrow's show with Justin Robert Young. I wrote about it in my Substack. So if you go to freetechnewsletter.com, you can get what I think, and then tune into DTNS tomorrow to listen to Justin tell me why I'm wrong. Chainalysis reports that ransomware attacks were up quite a big, uh, quite a big up in 2023, with many attacks carried out exploiting the file transfer software issue MoveIt and ransom money clearing $1 billion in extorted cryptocurrency payments from victims. Now, Chainalysis notes this is a big uptick after ransomware showed declining year over year efficacy as of 2022. So it was a bad year. OpenAI announced that its image generator Dolly 3 will now add watermarks to image metadata uh, using standards from the Coalition for Content Providence and Authenticity, the C2PA. That has folks like Microsoft on board, so it's a good standards organization. You'll see those watermarks on both the ChatGPT website and the API for the Dolly 3 model. They will include both an invisible metadata component and a visible CR symbol, which will appear in the top left corner of each image. Mobile users get access to the feature first starting February 12th. Some Apple Vision Pro users, such as myself, complained about having to go into an Apple store or repair center or even mail back their unit if they happen to get locked out of their device, most commonly because somebody forgot a passcode. Although I still stand by <laughs> the fact that I did not forget my passcode. There was something else going on. Vision OS 1.1 beta contains code spotted by 9to5Mac and released Tuesday to developers that adds an option letting users, not just developers, but users erase all data from a Vision Pro when they forget a password used to unlock the device. This new alert says, this Apple Vision Pro is in a security lockout. You can try and wait, try your passcode again, or you can erase and reset this Apple Vision Pro now. Now, it has activation lock on, so you're going to still need an Apple ID password to reactivate the device, but this should keep some people uh, from going into a store that they don't want to go into. 
Yeah, this is just in the beta, so we don't know when we'll get this. My guess is probably in a, within the month. So <laughs> don't forget your passcode uh, in the next month. And uh, or or like Sarah, run into inexplicable problems that we still don't quite understand why they happen. But haven't happened again. You know, I, I suffer, so you don't have to. Exactly. That's, That's why do. we do this. Yeah. Indeed. Well, X, you know, X. Former, formerly Twitter, hit the that's number the one. That's the site that's at twitter.com, X, right. It yeah. is, that's the yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'll it'll redirect to x.com, but they both work. Uh, it hit the number one slot among free apps on Apple's App Store on Wednesday. Now, you might say, is that weird? Is that significant? Well, it was for a very, very specific reason. That reason is hashtag Drake video. We're not going to go into too many details about this exact video, but... It is alleged to be the rapper Drake in a nude uh, situation. So it might be real. It might be fake. We don't know. But overall, very NSFW content. Let's just, you know, we'll leave it right there. X is not new to this, though. In fact, X has had a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of folks talking about how the platform is not doing a great job of getting this ki kind of content off of the platform. In fact, uh, we talked about this late uh, in late January when fake AI generated explicit images of Taylor Swift, another artist, were circulating among users in really big numbers. Um, it, le it led to X at one point blocking all searches for her name altogether, just in uh, until things got back under control. Uh, this seems to be the same idea. Now, there's a lot of kind of tee-hee we can do about this whole thing just because of the nature of the video in question. Because he's the videos in question. Right. But I think, you know, <laughs> I, you know, it does present a bigger problem of, you know, how does a platform, um, a platform that says we have a zero tolerance policy, um, you know, against all sorts of content like this, to have such a hard time scrubbing that content from its platform because I looked for it a few times today and it's not gone. Yeah. Knives are out for X right now. Let's, let's just put that out there in front. Like people want it to fail. So it can't uh, do enough to satisfy a lot of people out there. Uh, that said, it's also true that X gutted its trust and safety team. Uh, it is much smaller than it used to be. And while the user base has declined a little, the user base is still 200 some million daily active users. That's a lot of users. And that is a very difficult system to deal with when something unusual happens like this, when something takes off viral uh, and becomes a problem. So it's no surprise to me that they can't keep up uh, now that this has taken off. Uh, Scott, do you, do you think... What, what, what do you think about that? Like, I don't think anyone disagrees that they should try to keep up uh, and that maybe if they'd kept more people, they could try to keep up. Yeah, I think that they and should still. And I think that they should hire for it if they haven't already or do something because this is going to backfire, even though it's a now privately owned uh, concern, that entirety of, of Twitter uh, X. It is still going to be given the number of users and uh, current laws around how we do things on the Internet. There are going to be a lot of scrutiny about this, and it's only going to get worse. The fact that people can very easily deepfake something with a, with AI uh, and put that video up, and even if people know it's AI, it doesn't matter. This stuff spreads like crazy, especially if it involves somebody very popular. Uh, in this case, two musicians, uh, could be actors in the future, who knows. Um, that pressure is just going to get worse and worse and worse, and you're going to have more and more questions about, well, do we need to step in and try to control this or does do they recede further into the part of the web where you know everything's sort of happening willy-nilly i don't i don't know what the answer to that is probably if i had to guess if elon musk is serious about this the service growing probably doesn't want that so if i were them i would want to hire the right people work on the right technology maybe even more that than just the right people because the tech can go a long way to detect these things and to find out better ways to stop it quick and early so that you're not spending a week trying to sweep up over over a mess and just be faced with another one next week which is probably going to happen 
and yeah. it'll probably happen even more because now this is a thing. Because people want it to happen because they right. want the clout of saying, I made the thing go viral on X because it's easier to do there and still has a huge audience uh, and has a CEO that that is excited that it has become the number one downloaded uh, app right. uh, on the App Store. I don't think he should be because these people are not going to stick around. They're just, if they didn't have Twitter installed before, uh, they're downloading X just to look for this hashtag and they're probably not going to hang out. I mean, maybe they will, but most of them probably won't. Well, and you, you mentioned the trust and safety team being, you know, more or less gutted. You know, if you are a huge star, if you're Taylor Swift, if you're Drake, if you're, I don't know, I mean, the list goes on. That is, that's one thing. And yeah, you're going to get a lot of interest. You're going to get a lot of, yeah, I guess people downloading the Twitter app for the first time, even though they didn't have it before type thing. I think where people, you know, really suffer are, you know, folks who are being exploited, who don't have the reach, who don't, you know, know people in high places, who can't, uh, you know, do a lot of stuff about this. Because when you report things to X at this point, um, it's a little bit of like a, well, let's wait and see, uh, because they, they simply aren't putting a lot of their efforts on the platform into helping people who don't have a huge following. I, yeah, I don't know if it's so much a wait and see as it is a, uh, we're doing our best, right? Because there's only so many of them and they can't do everything. Yeah. That's true. And I do worry about people who aren't Drake and who aren't Taylor Swift, who have the resources to actually make a giant noise out of this. Uh, just simple stuff like somebody being, you know, uh, having their, their image used in this way. And then there's there's lots of places on the internet where that happens. That's oh, what we talked about that Mozilla uh, service that's eight ninety nine a month uh, on yesterday yep. show mm -hmm. to, to to remove that. So X wouldn't be alone if it was the kind of place no. where that could that could happen. Uh, it could be right up there with a lot of other places. So. Yeah, I mean, if it does, if it gets worse on X, I guess the I guess the problem is they want it to be a big giant service like Twitter has always been a big player in social media. They want to keep that going. You can't go further down that that hole <laughs> you have yeah. to you have to figure out a way to make it so your you mainstream users the way pornography becomes popular you're you're not popular with an audience you know that is mainstream and wants to admit it maybe this is what x's future is i mean that's yeah, a fair, yeah. it's a fair i'm not point. saying it is but i mean that, no. that is an avenue that is that is sure. a path. It could that's be. a road they could yeah. take yeah, yeah. Um, in related news, Apple has a new large language model. No, I, this is this is an entire entire change of tone. Uh, from 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 Drake, uh, showing us so much of Drake. It is a nude situation. Or possibly Sarah's not Drake. Could yeah. be just fake. We have no idea. We don't know. Yeah. Exactly. We weren't there. We definitely do not know. I certainly wasn't there. Uh, Apple and scientists at UC Santa Barbara released an open source multimodal large language model. Multimodal means it can do text and images and sometimes other things. In this case, it's text and images. It'll convert natural language instructions into image edits. Uh, it's called MLLM Guided Image Editing, or MGIE. And so you can do the expected things that you would do with any image editor. You can say, increase the contrast, change the brightness, make it sharper, resize the image, change the color, texture, filter, all that stuff. Uh, change background images. You can blend images. But you don't need to use those terms to do a lot of the stuff. An example they give in their paper is you could tell MGIE, take a picture of chocolate donuts with sprinkles and let the donuts have a strawberry glaze on them. So if you're, you're not able to see this, imagine like you've got a plate full of chocolate donuts with sprinkles and you say, let the donuts have strawberry glaze and the model will add the glaze, leaving the sprinkles on top and the chocolate visible just underneath on the edges. Uh, just based on your, your natural language. You could also tell it to remove the Christmas tree in the background or add lighting and make it add lightning and make the lightning reflect on the water. <laughs> uh, source code, data, and pre-trained models are available on GitHub. Uh, you can also try it out on the web if you go to the Hugging Face Spaces platform. So I don't know if you, if you guys have seen these cool, um, there, there are other large language image generation models, and they're not Apple's, but what it feels like Apple's aiming for is something I've seen before, where the demonstration is less about you having a bunch of good prompts and then waiting for it to render, and then it does. And then you say, well, of these four images, I'll use the fifth, but I want to change mm -hmm. it some. And then you go in and tweak it. Then you wait again. What I think the future is of this stuff, for good or ill, is in real time, you saying, donut, boop, there's a donut. Very basic. 
Mm-hmm. Turn it a little bit. It turns. Yeah. Put that's what Apple's it. that's what Apple's model is doing here. Exactly. Yeah. And that is exactly thing. where this is headed. That is the smart tact. It's where it is. It's where it is. Yeah. You're absolutely right. It really Apple's is. Like, we there just already. did it. We, yeah. we we advanced it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they and that that is where it should go. If you're gonna if you're asking me from just sort of a workflow, what we're doing prior to this is really uh, I mean, it's impressive on its face. You're like, whoa, look, I just made a pirate ship or whatever it is you made. But then you took forever kind of to do it. This is gonna that's gonna feel like dot matrix printers pretty soon. We're gonna be lasering through this stuff and it's gonna be real time, natural language, and that's very interesting. It also yeah. means a lot more headaches for X. Sorry to refer to the last story, but this stuff's gonna get easier to make. But that's but that's the point. You're not have to sit little, there and render forever, you know. Yeah, a little under the hood for you, Scott, because I think this will make sense to you particularly. If you type make the sky more blue in MGIE it actually has a part of the model that converts that to increased saturation of the sky region by 20%. Mm-hmm. It then hands that to the image generator so that it it, ha- it knows exactly what to do. So you've got two parts of this thing working. I think that's one of the things that makes it unique. Yeah. Well, I think, and, um, you know, the difference between Scott and me is, you know, Scott would be like, well, I could just do this myself. You know, I know exactly what I, <laughs> you know, faster. kind of, you know, on, <laughs> yeah. on the scale. And I'm yeah. like, oh, remove the Christmas tree. Wow, yeah, that, that exists. I'm the same way. Make the sky more blue, please. I don't know what that means. <laughs> right. yeah. percent, whatever. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I know, you know, Photoshop whizzes will shake their heads being like, ah, oh, shakes fist. Uh, you know, this is, this is, this is why we're good at this. How dare they make it faster for me? <laughs> Yeah, you know, these other, you know, these people don't even know what they're talking about. But um it it does it opens up uh the the, the chance to make an image and video uh, going forward in the future so much more interesting. Yeah, and now, so much faster. It really is more of a workflow thing if I'm if I'm honest cuz this isn't like this isn't like changing the idea of you're making what you want to make. You're just going to be able to make it faster and more intuitively. Yeah. And this is an interesting advance on its own, but I think it's even more interesting in the context of the drumbeat of Apple issuing scientific papers. This was published in a journal with the UC Santa Barbara folks and open sourcing models. Uh, they, they remember back in December, they had a couple of papers out about uh, a, ways to do inferencing on device. So you didn't have to use cloud resources. And during the earnings call, Apple said, we're going to have a lot of really cool stuff from AI coming later this year. There's also the rumors that in- internally people in Apple are saying that the next version of iOS is the biggest change in iOS ever. Uh, to me, it's all leading to Apple saying, look, we've got great AI chops, even if we haven't made a big deal out of them by putting out a chat GPT or a Bard, and you're going to see them in iOS at WWDC this summer. Yeah, and it's so much more along the Apple lines of what they what they want us to think is cool. Like yeah. it's not you can program your own uh, spreadsheet in minutes. It's not they're not they don't that's boring to them. What they want to do is say you can get in there like a dream and you can say yeah. these words out of nothing and you're going to be they're going to really go for that. Tim Cook is right. going to be floating 2 inches above the ground when he announces this. Cuz they're open sourcing the models. They're like the value isn't in the models. Let everybody do the models. They'll make the models better and that helps us. Mm-hmm. The value is in the implementation and we yeah. think we have the special implementation that other people don't. Just like they weren't the first to do a touchscreen, but they thought they had done it better than other people and it turned out, oh well, yeah, they kind of did. did. Yeah. Uh, If you have feedback about anything that gets brought up on the show, uh, get in touch with us on the socials at DTNS show on X and on mstdn.social, DTNS show at mstdn.social for Mastodon, Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, and DTNS Picks, DTNS PIX on Instagram and Threads. Earlier this week, we reported on news that Microsoft might be looking to bring some of its game titles like Hi-Fi Rush to other platforms like Sony's PS5 and Nintendo Switch. Now, you might say, is this a shift away from a console-centric model of selling games to one based on game sales overall and games as a subscription, even more importantly, or a move to head off criticism and potential government regulation over recent studio buying sprees? Scott, help us out here. What is the strategy, you think? Well, a bunch of us are keeping real close uh, uh, sort of contact with this story because it is still evolving. In fact, we just heard uh, that uh, Phil Spencer over there at Microsoft, head of Xbox, 
is uh, going to have a little meeting next week or tell people what's going on. In fact, I'll just quote from his ex-post where he says, we're listening and we hear you. Uh, we've been planning on business updates for the next week, and we will. Uh, we look forward to sharing more detail with you about our vision for the future of Xbox. Um, I have a feeling, though, and I've had a feeling through this entire ordeal, despite all the hyperbole, that this is just them kind of moving more toward the goals they've already told us they have, which is the games service and the IPs and the games themselves are going to be what is where the depth is with Microsoft moving forward. They are less concerned about making sure it's their plastic box under your TV moving into the next generation than they are about you having a monthly subscription to Game Pass or whatever form their other services may end up taking. And I think this is a step in that direction. Unfortunately, this step is in mostly rumor and a couple of confirmations. The one confirmation we have is that Hi-Fi Rush is for sure coming to at least the Switch, if not other platforms. It's already on PC, of course. Uh, so we'll leave PC out of this whole conversation. They're already all on, on PC. Um, but Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, big, big title coming from Bethesda, which is now Microsoft-owned studio. That's being rumored to showing up on PlayStation 5 as well as the Xbox Series uh, devices. And Starfield, which is already out on Xbox Series uh, as of last holiday season, is rumored pretty heavily to be maybe the first one they announced that's like the big deal, like, yep, this is coming to PlayStation. Um, it is ironic that right around the time of Starfield's announcement, uh, or not announcement, but as we got closer to launch, people were like, oh, I wish they'd put it on the PlayStation 5. I don't have an Xbox. I was looking forward to the next big Bethesda game. And now they might actually get it. And now that the conversation just turned to, you turn coach, you're selling the world off to somebody else. I can't believe it. So there's a lot of tribalism and stuff going on. Um, I'm going to try to cut through that real quick and explain. Years ago, Spencer and others at the company have said, look, what matters to us is services and the future and the cloud and all this. Um, and it started then to, to feel like, well, the hardware is going to be a little bit secondary. They're still going to make some hardware and we're going to get it or not, but that's not really the point. The end game is we're going to be playing what they have on lots of stuff, including their $68 million acquisition of Activision Blizzard uh, King. And we're not there yet, so we're in the short term. And I think in the short term, porting stuff to PlayStation will happen. And uh, their continued support of their own Xbox line will also continue in the short term. None of that really changes much. PlayStation is going to have access to some formally exclusive titles. Uh, in the midterm, though, I think that they will continue to beef up their games for portfolio and their multi-platform support over time. I still think there might be an Xbox to play all that on in the midterm and even the long term. They may still make that stuff, but what will matter most is these services and the cloud and trying to get competitors to allow their service on them. They've said out loud before, we would love to put Game Pass on PlayStation 5. Sony is not letting them do that currently. Um, and they would love to do it on, on Nintendo and had many discussions with Nintendo about this. And they also have opted out of it. But that doesn't mean they won't in the future, depending on Microsoft's you know, plans for exclusivity and or hardware moving forward. Um, I have some predictions about the long term. I think it's all about services, cloud, and the games and the IPs and the studios, which they have been spending so much money on. Uh, there's no way that they don't care about that most. Um, and they're not going to care what box you play it on. I think there's even a possible future, and others have posited this as well, so it's not just me, but I think there's a, a possible future where Microsoft makes a handheld, and that device is maybe like a, a Switch or a Steam Deck, and its sole purpose is to play your Microsoft Game Pass life on. That may be hard drive, and it may actually have hardware to run it, or it may be purely cloud-based. I don't know, but it would be an opportunity for them to say, hey, we got a thing, so if you don't want to play this stuff over the cloud in your notebook, that's fine. You can buy this or play it on your PlayStation, or play it on your PC, or play it in a thousand other ways. We don't care where you play it as long as you're playing our games. And I, I, I really feel like that's where they're planting their flag. This, uh, this is Microsoft's strategy with Office and Surface devices. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's the same yeah. strategy, which is like, you want to make Office available on as many platforms as possible so people use it. But you're also making your own hardware, the Surface, as sort of a flagship demonstration of, of you know, the, the best version of Microsoft software. Yeah, it feels to me, and I, and, and I think you're, you're, you're echoing it exactly, this is, their, this is their strategy on the, from the top down. Like the entire company is this now, these days. And, and, and having, them, having them do the same thing on the Xbox line is not, should not be surprising 
yeah. especially because they have been signaling it and outright saying this sort of stuff for years. This isn't new. No. Uh, I think a lot of Xbox faithful were just like, well, look at Microsoft. They're beefing up everything. This is going to be incredible. They're going to own everybody and everything. Sony will have to sell. They'll have to buy Sony. Sony will be so in much trouble. And it's not. <laughs> It's not that. Yeah. It isn't that. That was never the plan. The plan was always... That would be like getting mad that Netflix made itself available on anything but the Roku. Right, right. That's exactly <laughs> right. And the, and, the, and the thing about that is, will Microsoft succeed? Like, there's big questions. Is this strategy a good one? Do we have all the details yet? No. Maybe next week we'll have a big enlightenment. I don't know. Uh, but do we know if it's going to be a surefire success? We don't. But they are betting on what the future of gaming is. And the future of gaming looks a lot like what Microsoft thinks it's going to look like. How much will they help shape that yeah. end, end times thing, scenario? I don't know. Um, how much will their competition do that? What would this do if Mike? I mean, it's fun to think about. If they pulled out a console hardware altogether, what does that actually do to this very competitive business? Does Sony suddenly have kind of a monopoly on the high end and Nintendo just does what Nintendo does and nobody's there to challenge Sony? Nobody kind of nobody really wants that. We think it's good to have you know, that healthy competition and keep everybody going. Does somebody step in and does Atari or somebody come from the grave, Sega, and go, hey, well, we'll get back in this race. I mean, those are all you know crazy ideas. But I'm I cannot wait to see if they do pull out of hardware, what happens there because that's fascinating. But what they're counting on is they have all the games right now, and they do. They have a ton. Yeah. And Satya Nadella has been running Microsoft as a cloud company since day one. He stepped right. in and was like, no, we don't make our money the way we did in the 90s off Windows. Look at Azure. That's where all the money is. Make money off cloud. Put Office in the cloud. Everyone's like, nobody wants Office in the cloud. Now everybody has Office in the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he's hoping the same can be true for games. Yeah, he might be right. All right. Well, Satya, Scott thinks you might be right. I hope you <laughs> like that. Let's check out the mailbag. <laughs> Martin wrote in on Patreon saying, following up on the thoughts of LinkedIn, also owned by Microsoft, being more of a serious social network, as many people think that it is, Microsoft also thinks so. Uh, Martin says, in Bing Copilot's Compose tab, if you select funny as the tone and LinkedIn post as the format, it replies with... I'm sorry, but I cannot generate text with a funny tone for a LinkedIn post. LinkedIn is a professional network, and a funny tone may be inappropriate or harmful to your reputation. Please choose a different <laughs> tone or a different format for your text. Wow, buzzkill, anyone. Jeez, yeah. don't be funny yeah, I know. at work. It's just trying to have a little x.com fun hey, around here. Hey, it's just a joke, LinkedIn. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, yeah. Interesting that, voice to that. I, I, I'm, I have two I minds on it, that, actually. right? Like, I get it. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. probably better if you're applying for a job not to try to be funny as your primary mode. Yeah, you can you can show a little sense of humor, but don't, don't write it in a funny tone. Yeah. On the other hand, I'm like, well, but also, like, jokes and, and humor within bounds that don't go over the line are fine in a business context. In fact, the, you know, opening your business presentation with a joke is a time-honored tradition. So, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Derek, who works in the advertising industry, uh, chimed in on our Blue Sky discussion from yesterday's Good Day Internet, uh, says most of the Twitter slash X alternatives are not ad supported, at least not yet. I'd be surprised if that wasn't their long term goal. Unlike restaurants, most social platforms, if not all, end up going into an ad-supported model or are part of an ad-supported company where they're used for data ingestion. Even Reddit has been shifting their platform to be even more advertiser-friendly. And I would uh, add to, to Derek's point here, you know, look at Netflix adding ads, Amazon adding ads to Prime Video, et cetera. When it comes to advertising, scale and reach is still most important. Sure, there are small properties that offer very targeted and niche communities, but they often stagnate or end up being bought out by larger competing platforms. It's not to say there'll be one platform that will rule them all, but I would imagine we will see a consolidation across these Twitter slash X alternatives in the coming years as, to pose, as opposed to having wide myriad choices. Hmm. That might be Blue Sky's advantage. If it can get to enough scale is to be able to say, we will offer an ad network across instances. You can opt in or not if you want it and then make money off of that versus having to be a centralized platform. There, there are ways to you know traffic ads on decentralized platforms. Look at podcasting, for example. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Scott Johnson, you know a thing or two about podcasting. So let folks know where they can keep up with your work when you're not with us. Well, they can sure do that over at frogpants.com. All the podcasts and art stuff is there. Speaking of art, I have this limited time. I think there might only be like eight of these left. Limited edition four prints that I created that are all on a zombie uh, theme. It's got a SpongeBob zombie and a zombie uh, Bambi, which I call a Zambi. Uh, <laughs> uh, George Decay instead of uh, George Decay. Anyway, a uh -huh. bunch of dumb ideas. Uh, and there are four of them, all hand signed and only 10 bucks and no shipping. It doesn't even matter if you live overseas. So we're doing this one quick one -off runoff on the show or on the, uh, on the store. I would recommend people grab it quick because they are literally almost gone. Head on over to frogpants.com slash store and check it out today. If you did a zombie version of me, it'd be a Tombi. It would be a Tombi. You're right. And this is a zombie for Sarah. Yeah. And a Rajombi like for Roger. Rajombi. Like a dance. <laughs> a zombie. Yeah. Yeah. And a Joby for Joe. There you go. We got them all. Got the beats going on. All right, folks. Uh, if you are a patron, and if you're not, oh, well, you know, not everybody's perfect. But uh, patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. We keep waiting for Apple to make a foldable, and the information has the latest inside info, which is you'll still have to keep waiting for a couple of years. But do we need to? Or can foldables succeed just fine without Apple? Hmm, stick around. We'll discuss. Just a reminder, we do the show live, and we'd love to have you join us live if you can. Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC, and you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're talking about that ESPN, Fox, Warner Brothers, Discovery, Mega Sports streaming service with Justin Robert Young joining us tomorrow. We'll talk to you then. The DTNS Family of Podcasts, helping each other. Understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>